All right, I'm gonna tie a classic fly here that everybody's probably pretty well versed in. Just the just a regular old classic Adams. Uh, so what we're gonna end up with is something that looks a little like this. Now, this is probably gonna be less of a tutorial on the Adams and probably a little bit more of a tutorial on tying a dry fly in general. Uh, so some of the things we're going to be using, I got a size 14 hook here in the vise. I'm just going to go ahead with some A dot uni thread in gray. Uh, when you tie a dry fly, you really kind of want to try to use the smallest diameter thread that you can get away with. Kind of helps with, you know, avoiding to build up too much bulk and all that kind of stuff. For this, this is a... This is a round thread. Um, it's not really going to lay all that flat, but my <clears throat> there's no reason to have an underbody that's flat. Uh, so it's not really going to affect anything. If you're tying a you know a quill body or something like that, you want to use a more of a flat thread uh, to give you a nice uniform underbody. So some of the things that we're going to be using, I'm going to be using this Cree cape here for the tail. And for the hackle itself, I'm going to use the classic... Uh, grizzly brown combination here. I mean, obviously, if I have a Cree cape, I can use Cree. Um, but honestly, I like the classic. Uh, the only reason why I use the Cree is really just for the tailing. Um, I like that a lot better. So, Okay, so again, as I said in the beginning, yes, it's going to be an Adams, but really it's just going to be more of a tutorial on dry flies in general. Uh, I want to show you how I do my wings. I want to show you how I do the tail, how I taper the body, all that stuff. So what I'm going to start out with first, I've got a piece of natural mallard. I just have one feather. Now when you look through the feathers, there's all kinds of different ones in there. Notice how this is the type where the top is even. And that's really important because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the middle and I'm going to notch it. And even the fibers from down here are going to be up and, and just give me a nice flat uniform top. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, there's all kinds of different feathers when you reach into a package of mallard and if you pull out the type that are not flat on top you're not going to get you know nice straight wings uh, to be honest with you you're not really going to see a ton of it it doesn't really matter all that much but it is a little bit nicer so I notched it about the length of the hook and I, I used to use two feathers for this but honestly the fly is lucky I'm putting wings on it at all I'm, I'm not a big fan of wings on dry flies I know they look nice but honestly you're putting a water absorbing material on a on a dry fly and you're putting it in a position where the fish can't even see it what the hell's the point um so I never really bought into all that but what I'm going to do is after I notch it I'm just going to start at the bottom I'm going to pull all those fibers forward and I'm going to grab it at the length that I want. That's a little bit long. So I'm just going to continue to pull that forward, keeping all of those fibers straight, about a hook shank in length, and that's going to be good. And I'm going to do a little pinch wrap here, get that cinched down, and start wrapping it in. That might even be a little long, but whatever. That'd be fine. Good. Now, for the next step, what you want to do is you want to taper the body. Uh, what I like to do with dry flies is I like to use a pair of these curved scissors. You don't need curved scissors, but they definitely do help. Um, I like to get the, the scissors opened up and get the butt of where I'm going to cut right at the end of my thread. So I'm going to pull this mallard tight and completely horizontal to the hook shank. And then I'm going to angle my, my scissors and just give one snip where I taper that down along the body. I went a little far there, so I'm gonna get some of these end pieces out of there. But you wanna cut that down at an angle so that when you continue with your wraps, a little more thread there, you can see how that's tapering down to the bare hook shank. That's gonna give you a nice tapered body right where you want it. Now I said before I like to use this Cree hackle and I use the Cree for the tail. When I tie an Adams, I, I do like the traditional uh, brown and grizzly. That's the way I've always done it. Um, but when you're when you're tearing fibers off of two different types, two different colors, 
trying to make a nice tail, sometimes that can be a little difficult. So the Cree does give you the option to just grab one set of fibers. Pull some of these stragglers out there that don't want to line up. And there's that. I'm going to line that up where I think I want it. Get that in there. It's a little long. I'm going to back that off. I when I tie, I don't really go by a lot of the rules, you know, where hey, you're, you know, this should be a hook shank in length or should be a hook gap in length or anything like that. I kind of just tie it the way I think that it looks the way that I want and and I'm good to go. That's really what I shoot for. Um there's there's some flies where that makes a big difference. One of the biggest areas where that makes a difference is some still water flies. Um, you know, if you're not tying things correctly, they can tip over and float weird. And that's where you see a big difference with that. So, okay. So there's our body, our tail, everything we need so far. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mallard and I'm going to fold it back. And I'm going to put a couple of wraps in front. Now, here's where I do things a little differently. You see a lot of tutorials where they want you to build up a big thread dam right here. And that is, you know, it, it's fine, but what's going to happen is if you put a big thread dam in front there, when you go to wrap your hackle, you're not going to have nice straight hook to wrap the hackle to. You're going to have a down sloping lump of thread, and that's going to make your hackle splay all over the place and not stand up and down, um, and that's not what I want. So if you just put a couple of wraps in front, just a couple... There is another step of this process where you can pull those fibers back. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to kind of grab that right in the middle. I'm going to put a piece of, I'm going to put a wrap right in the middle to separate them. Then I'm going to hold this wing up and I'm going to run a couple of wraps right around the base. And that's going to kind of gather all of those fibers. Now, th this is a pretty interesting step. If you put too much pressure on your thread, obviously it's going to jump over the wing. The wing's not going to be able to withstand that much thread pressure. So you have to try to get into a rhythm here where you're putting enough pressure on it to wrap the bottom of those fibers, but not putting too much pressure on it. And it does take some getting used to. Hey, what are you eating? Come here. Come here. Get over here. What do you got? Yep, the infamous dog's got something in her mouth. Never fails. So now that I've got the one wing done, I'm going to move over here, grab the other clump, and while I'm holding it, I'm going to get a wrap in at the base. I lost it. And then I'm going to get a few wraps going up. Now, once you get a couple of wraps in, if you slip your thread, you're going to lose it all. So you might want to just get a couple wraps around the shank and save your work. And then come back, get a few more in. There we go. That's pretty good. And there we go. All right. So now I've put a few wraps in there and I've got them at least separated and I've got them where I want them. This fiber is kind of bugging me. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a wrap in front of the wing that's away from me, put it back into the middle, and here's where I can pull it back. If I pull my thread back, I can stand that wing up right where I want. So I'm going to come around the front again, then I'm going to wrap my thread in the middle, and then back towards me, and then I'm going to pull that wing back with my thread. And when it sits where I want it, I'm going to lock it in the rest of the way, and those wings are exactly where I want them. Stand it up nice and straight, separated nicely. I think they could be centered a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, I, I really just could not care less about wings. Don't even care if they're on there at all. All right, so now I'm going to bring my thread back down my body, and... <clears throat> I don't have the label here for you. I just have this dubbing dispenser and I've got a section in there for atoms. So before I get into my dubbing, 
I've put up a post on a couple of the groups that I'm in. Here is that little tool that I have on my desk. This ping pong ball here floats in a little bit of water. So if you just rotate it, it just gets a little bit of moisture on your fingers. Rub it together. It's the perfect amount of moisture to make sure that you can make a nice little dubbing loop here or dubbing noodle. And I'm going to grab a tiny little tuft of dubbing and get that dubbed onto my thread. Now, when you're putting your dubbing on closer to the tail, remember what you want to do. You want to taper your body. So the first little tuft of dubbing that you're going to put on your thread is going to be kind of not so much sparse, but it, there's not going to be a whole lot of dubbing in there because you want to make sure that when you give it your first couple of wraps down near the tail that you're not building up a bunch of bulk right away. And as I do this, I apologize for my hands and my fingers that are just mangled right now. I'm building a shed outside, so I'm a mess right now. But you know what? Deal with it. If you're focusing on my fingers and you're trying to get something different out of this video, and that is strange. All right. So... One of the ways that you can dub a dry fly and taper the body is to taper your dubbing noodle, meaning as you go further down your thread, put more and more dubbing on. I've never really done that. I like to just keep my dubbing noodle uniform and taper it myself as I go. So I'm going to move my thread to the back. Once I see that I've got a wrap of dubbing at the tail, now I'm going to start wrapping forward with touching wraps. My body is tapered, so that's going to help as well. But I'm going to make sure that as I'm wrapping, I'm building bulk the way that I want. And this does take a little bit of practice. Just make sure that you're going up at the same rate, essentially. Okay, so that's looking good so far. I mean, we've got a little bit further to go, but... All right, I want my fingers a little more. A little bit more dubbing. You know, another thing too is, uh, you know, I apologize if there's any really, really new tires watching this video. I, I don't normally say, hey, you know, your, your wing should be this far back from the eye. You know, I said in the beginning that I kind of eyeball everything, and that really is just what I do. So I don't really have any rules or anything for, you know, here's how you line up your wings and make sure you get your proportions right. I, I, I literally just eyeball everything. So that's about as far as I want to go with the dubbing. So I'm just going to kind of fill in everything else and finish out my taper. And that's going to be what our body looks like. So we're in pretty good shape so far. So... Obviously, the only thing left to do is the hackle. And when it comes to the hackle, what you got to do, especially because you're tying in two different, two different types, I'm going to wrap my grizzly second to fill in the brown, which means if I'm going to wrap it second, I want to tie it in first. Um, it's, if you tie it in first, it's going to sit back a little bit further and then fill in the gaps. You, you don't want to tie in the grizzly first and then wrap it first or else the stems are going to overlap. It's going to, it's going to look weird, create some weird little problems. Um, if you ever want to try it, you'll see what I mean. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, but if I'm going to wrap my grizzly second, I'm going to tie it in first. So you can see how I've ripped some of the barbs off. And then on the side that's going to be wrapped around the shank, I ripped a few more barbs going up. So I'm going to tie this in right where the barbs start facing me. Right about there, maybe down a little bit, you can pull it. Good, right about there. One more wrap to lock it in and it's good. Now I'm gonna do the same with a brown. You might be able to see this a little bit better on the camera, so see how I took the side that's facing me, that's my tie-in point, and then on the right side of the quill, I wrapped a little or I pulled off a few more barbs going up. 
So now I'm going to tie my brown in right next to the grizzly. So both of those are in there and now I'm going to take some tighter wraps and get those locked right in. And then before I get to my eye, I'm going to get these quill to get those out of the way. Reach in there with some scissors. Sorry, I know I'm blocking the whole thing, but all I'm doing is snipping these off. I don't want to hit my light or anything here, so get my scissors in there. Get that snipped off, and I'm going to bring my thread all the way to the front. Okay. Now, there's all kinds of different ways to wrap hackle. I'm using feathers from a cape. So, you know, the, the obviously the feathers are plenty long enough, but they're not as long as a saddle. Um, so when I tie dry flies with capes, I like these English hackle players the best. Um, there's all different kinds of hackle players that you can use. Um, probably my next favorite, uh, if I can find them in my drawer of tools here, which I don't see them right away. Oh, here we go. I also like this, it's got a rotating head on it to keep the feather from twisting, which is a pretty cool hackle player as well. Um, but I definitely just like the English hackle players. So I said already that I'm going to tie my brown first. So I'm going to give my brown an initial wrap just to get it started. And I'm going to pull it tight and get my player cinched on there. And I'm going to... Just take some touching wraps here. If I can get about three or four on the back side of the wings, then I'm going to be happy with the proportions. Now, I've already gone as far as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold these wings and fold them back. And I'm going to put my wrap as tightly in on the front of the wings as I can. And then here's one other thing you want to do. When that quill comes around the bottom side it's going to start grabbing some of the fibers that are already wrapped in there and it's going to start to splay them and bend them forward so when I'm down here straight down watch my feather I'm going to kick it out towards the eye a little bit bring it forward and then bring it back so by kicking it forward a little bit what that does is it is it keeps it from grabbing a bunch of fibers and just kind of you know making them splay all over the place and it keeps your hackle more vertical on the hook shank which is what you're looking for and you can see a little bit of the head popping out so I'm going to stop wrapping right there get that tied down get my pliers off and give it one more wrap to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and we're good now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the same thing with the grizzly I'm gonna give it one initial wrap and before I go any further, I'm going to hold it tight. And I'm going to get my hackle pliers on there. All right. Now, we're just going to go. And I'm going to let the feather kind of guide itself as it wraps right in. It's going to, because I've already got one feather wrapped, when I start wrapping this, it's really just going to kind of fall where it wants to fall. And you don't really need to do a whole lot. I got a little bit of a twist there. I want to do one more behind the wings. I don't like how that laid. So now I'm going to hold these back. Get a wrap in front. And that's a little bit better. So. Up there. And now I can see that my grizzly is at about the same spot as my brown. So now I'm going to tie that down as well. And I'm going to get a couple of wraps all the way to the eye to cinch that down. And then here's how I tie this off. I'm going to take my finger. I'm going to grab as many of these as I can. I'm going to pull it back to expose the hook eye. And while I have all the fibers back, I'm going to bring my thread up. And I'm going to slip a thread wrap right in front to where I'm starting to force all these back. That'll help you get a little bit of a cleaner eye on there. So I got about three wraps on there. And I've got these very, very fine arrow scissors. And I'm going to slip my point in there as tightly as I can. 
and snip that off. You're always going to have a few kind of little stragglers there. Just kind of get in and snip those off. Especially when you're tying two hackles in, you'll see kind of strays all over the place. And when you snip them off, they'll be stuck inside. Get some of those out of there, get that cleaned up. All right, so now I'm going to take an extra wrap or two, kind of cover up whatever's left over. I got a, some stray fibers there that are jumping in. All right, and then we'll take our whip finisher. Slip that in there. One, two, three. If you want, you can add a touch of head cement if you want. I do not use head cement. I stopped using that years ago. I am a firm believer that head cement does not add durability. What it does is it creates a nice glossy head, which in many applications can give you the look that you might be looking for. But if you're looking for durability, a good three to five turn whip finish it's really all you need and that is pretty much it we're just cleaning up a couple of stragglers here but those wings are right where i want them the proper length hackle is nice and nice and bushy that thing will float for days i like the look of the body pretty much everything there is exactly what i'm looking for so like i said we did tie in atoms but you know, that really could have been a tutorial on any dry, any standard dry fly. Um, that's how I do the body. That's how I do my tails, my wings, how I wrap my hackle, uh, everything beginning to end. Um, obviously, this fly is really, really well known, unbelievably productive. But whatever dry fly you are tying, everything that we did in this video can be applied to that as well. Obviously, just change up the hackle, change up the dubbing. Um, but that's how you tie a basic standard dry fly and that is pretty much it So again, I appreciate it. If you have any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I see it